Yeah, you remember this farm somewhere in uh, Georgia, or good state, Nigeria. Now I'm back here again one more time to just tell off how we've gone. You know, we showed you a demonstration of the scalar energy with the camera guy, the guy behind the camera. His name is Jeremiah. Uh, no, it wasn't him, it was his mom, right? Now let's see what happened using this energy shell thing. Now let's go see the energy shell that's installed now. So that's going to give them what we call live water. Now here is a, here is the energy shell. Now water comes from the bowl and then because the water is dead already because the, the, the water is turned in a clockwise motion by the water pump. So definitely it kills and coats now. You better come open and close the water. So you got dead water coming in here and then as it goes in here to go into the bio tank to serve the house, to serve the farm, that's not, that's not okay for them. Now, because quite a number of advanced countries use what they call live water, they infuse scalar energy into their water so as to help productivity, enhance the immune system, uh, make more oxygen available in the water, it will help the uh, what's it called the acidic content in the water, make the water to be neutral. That's why we have this right in here. Now we call this energy shell. Now it's installed to actually because the water comes in very fast. So what we did was to make sure that we have a bypass so that when it's pressure because the energy shell is re the, there's a reduction in the pipe in here so that you don't have to put a pump under pressure. That's why we have this bypass. All you just is is percentage of the water, even just 20 percent to get into the bar, a tank and then into the farm and you have what you call a perfect perfected water H74037 which is almost like cytoplasm of LD tissue. So we're gonna go in there now and see what we've got for them now from the open roof thing that most people have as fish farms now you have to the small fish farm so these are not great so let's go in Getting dark in here now, which is good for the fishes because they are nocturnal animals. So I'm going to put on first of all the uh, the lights, the red lights. Now when you come in into this place, the first thing you observe is everyone will be dark. Now instead of carrying torchlight about, with all respect to Zaki Atze, the musician, you know, always carrying torchlight about. Now you might not see the fishes very well and the fishes get started when you put touch on their face but when you have a red lamp like this the fishes feel that the environment is still dark because they are nocturnal unlike uh, you that is phototactic you can still see to some extent but the fish is happy because they now trust you because they know you can't even capture them at all now the only set of people who use this kind of red light in the environment are the bad boys in pubs you know <laughs> and then I think Cape Canaveral in the uh, United States, where you have to go to space, when you are so much in under red light, your pupils begin to really get used to a dark environment. Even if uh, our almighty Nepal PC takes the light and you're eating, you don't have to stop the food in your nose with because your eyes, your pupils adapt quickly because of the red lamp. Okay? So that's for the red thing. So you leave it on in the evening like that so that the fish seem happy. Come closer. The fish seem happy. Looking at you, you can see them and they feel it's dark. But then when you want to go ahead and observe, you want to grade, you want to harvest fish, or you want to see a fish, how they're doing, then you've got to put on the main lamp. And what we have here, let's, let me see. Okay. Okay, we've got the right one. You see, it's a brighter environment now for the right side. And then for the left side, we've got, oh, okay, there's the left side. Good, so I put on the, Put up the uh, the red. Now it's not a bright environment. Now what is still going on? Because these are not great. And once a pond is done wrongly in the beginning, it's quite a lot of effort to really get it ap appropriately uh, reconfigured. You still see a one percent mistake, three percent mistake here and there. But eventually you get it. it's like doing cosmetic surgery. Now if you have a lot of tribal marks and then you want to get them erased completely. What's been there since you were born? You know, it's quite a lot of effort. No matter the plastic surgery, a few of the bits will still be there, the scar will still be there. So the same thing with this too. But we're trying our best because in the beginning, the pond was not actually braced. There's supposed to be pillars at the edges, and then you have a beam all across like that kind of. This one there. So you still see a little bit of cracks there, eh? like uh, they found here, a little bit of crack again to just uh, readjust. We've sealed it already, but then it's a little bit of cracks 
a little bit of a sipping here and there. So that's what they've done. Now, this would never have happened if there's an horizontal beam. But it's not. So you just keep, I have to make sure the engineer enjoys this. Maybe later on, they convert it to a massive, a big, a big uh, nursery, and then they build a bigger facility out there later on. So let's now look at uh, the functionality of the pond itself. Now, each of these ponds is supposed to take this about uh, four meters by, uh, I think, I think four by. Uh, four by four or so, four by four by five, right? Now to take two thousand fishes, two thousand, I mean, two thousand fishes going to one kg, selling at about uh, nine hundred naira or eight hundred, maybe let's say eight hundred naira per fish, talking about one point eight million naira. This might look like a playhouse, but what makes that possible? That's what he's talking about: hundred fish per square meter. Now, hundred fish per square meter. <clears throat> That's possible because the sun isn't available anymore. Two, the fishes, the lightning is controlled because of the shade. Enemies are not there anymore. Birds, rodents, alligator, uh, what's called dragonfly baby, all the things that are going to plummet your, plummet your, what's it called, your productivity. So you're sure to get an average with human being practice. So one of the first major things that makes you to be able to get that result is this stuff called the blower. The hair blower. Now this is a very important tool. I'm going to put it on a little bit, but let me tell you what it does. Now it's a system. It goes up there and it goes around like a ring, and then from there you now have this coming down. About four in each point. Yeah, six in each point. Now what does this do really? It does about four things. Now let's take it. Is the one you want to make money from the fish? Now it's the flesh of the fish you sell, and that flesh is protein. Protein is made up of amino acids. And the building block of amino acid is uh, carbon, nitrogen, oxygen. Now, carbon is the food you buy. Whether you buy imported food, exported food, local food, or there about, you got all the best of carbon. C. Now, nitrogen is free in the atmosphere. God gave us 70%, 70% or so. Sorry. It's 1970 at Cyber School. I can't remember very well. Again. I can't remember. The amount of nitrogen in the atmosphere. 70. 70 Jeremiah, can you even remember? Amount of nitrogen is about 70 something percent. That's free. We want to thank God for that. So, carbon, the food you give, God puts the nitrogen there free, and then the critical one is the oxygen. Now, we are breaking in 20, 20 something percent, right? Maybe 21 percent or so. But when you have water stagnant like this, you pump it in, it's got just 8 percent oxygen. 8 percent. Now, the bad news once you leave water in a container, for a day, two, three, four, it starts getting worse. How bacteria in the atmosphere settles inside the water. And when you touch the outside of your bucket, it becomes slimy. Am I wrong? It becomes slimy. Those are billions of bacteria in your hand. If you check with a dissolved oxygen meter, you know what you get? You're going to see oxygen rating 0.0001%. Oh my God. The best carbon in the world, free nitrogen, and then oxygen is not enough. So, the fish will not be able to convert your food into flesh appropriately. That's sad news. So, it's important to make sure you up the ante on your oxygen. Very, very important. And that's the reason why this guy is here. To pump in. I'm going to put it on now for you to see. It's got a sweet sound. Let's, let's, let's see it. Okay, let me let me let me fix it a little bit. What's going on? Okay. Right. Uh, come on, come on, come on. See, this one is it's shifting. Okay. Just gonna fix it now, so that I don't upset my my recording. Now this call and hair blower. Now it's the airline system that takes water and uh, that takes air into the pipes and then into this airline to be and it's an air regulator if you get closely and look you'll see that we have what they call bubbles coming up now what does this bubble do now it does four things number one let's come closer come closer what does it do let's get close to where we have let's get close to where we have some fish now what does this guy do we still got some fish here left over up there earlier stock like you know i told you this an upgrading thing now look at what we have here now now it ends up with an air stone. Now, what happens here? Just four things. Number one, it removes hydrogen sulfide from the waste food, decaying food at the bottom of the pond. Number one. 
Number two, it removes ammonia smell from the water, from the urine of the fish and the fecal matter. Right? So it moves up the ammonia. So you can hear, oh, Kerima, I'm sure you're hearing some ammonia smell, right? It's yeah. taking up the ammonia that can actually impede the growth of fish and their convenience. Then number three is removing carbon dioxide from the water. And this is what makes fishes grow off white color. Carbon dioxide. Then number four is going to enhance the oxygen, like I told you earlier on, from 0.001% to at least about minimum. 8% or slightly 7 to 8% and that's a lot because it's going to make your fish to be able to convert your food from 1 kg of food to 1 kg of flesh. Later on I'm going to tell people to start looking for oxygen cones like you see overseas in Europe. You always see people using oxygen cones to actually increase the amount of oxygen in the water and that's even part of the game by the energy shell outside to enhance oxygen to again in H74037. So with this, the stage is set for growth. All you do is make sure that with this, you don't need to change your water too regularly anymore. Why? The water can be dirty, brown, murky, but yet it's still clean. Why? Because there's no carbon dioxide in the water. There's very little ammonia. There's very little hydrogen sulfide. And there's still no oxygen. After all, the fish are called African mud catfish. They are found in mud. But I can tell you, your water can be crystal clear like this. Oh, sorry. Ah, it's already I'm a, I'm a theory recorder, so... For that. Now, <laughs> now, your water can be clean like this and yet it's foul. That happens in a recycling system where you have a lot of nitrates in the water and then the water even though it looks clean but it's foul and it's harmful to fish. And you can be that brown and still be healthy. Why? Because all the contaminants is all from the water. And if you are happy, I believe with this, a few of you will have been one of the things or what it takes to really run a farm successfully. By the way, this facility, you can beam around for them to see Jeremiah. Uh, put up a, a, a few things. All right, that's a dark, what's it called? Now, this facility, that's about uh, six pounds, 2,000 fishes each. That's 12,000 uh, 12, fishes all in all. Yeah, I think I'm right. Two times six, that's 12,000 fishes. Multiply that by uh, 800 naira. Then multiply by two. That gives the amount of value this farm can offer you in a year. I don't think that's kids grow in Nigeria here. And it's just occupying about uh, half of a plot. I think that's enough for you folks today. I hope uh, this news upon some people to want to get interested in fish so that Nigeria can become the number one fish producing nation in the world. I hope I see you there. Mr. Fish, speaking.